What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Pastor D. Hey, welcome to Love Under the Influence podcast. On today's episode, we'll be discussing are you married but living single? Hey, I'm Pastor Tay. Let's get into it. So many couples, right, they get married and whether it be the wife or the husband, one person may feel like they carry the workload. So say if the wife, for instance, she take the kids to school, she get them ready for school, she cook, she clean, and she, um, you know, do, do her wifely duties. But the husband feel like because he goes to work and he's the breadwinner, he makes the majority of the money, he take care of the household, then he don't have to do any other thing regarding the household. So the woman may feel like I'm in a, a relationship, I'm married, but it still feels like I'm single because I go to functions by myself. I go to birthday parties by myself. I go to, um, you know, dinners or outings by myself, but I'm married, but it still feel like I'm single. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's easy because a lot of times there's a disconnect. I think that when we have different responsibilities, life just happens. And when you don't make your marriage priority as life happens, you just grow comfortable. You grow comfortable in having to go alone or grow comfortable in raising the kids by yourself or grow comfortable in uh, just going to work and coming home. And some men feel like as long as I take care of home, what's the problem? The problem is you could be taking care of the needs of the household and neglecting the needs of your wife. Right, because it, it's more to, to being married than just paying bills. Right. You know, being being a man and being the head of the household, you have to share the responsibilities. Like husbands, fathers, they take the kids to the doctor. The, the kids throw up at night. You know, the, the fathers, dads, they get up and they help. You don't you you don't leave that responsibility solely on your wife maybe because she don't work. But now in today's time that we living in now, today's climate, women are bosses. Women have their own money. They have their own things going on. So the responsibility of the household should be shared so one person don't feel burned out. So one person don't feel like they're being taken advantage of. And there's nothing wrong with sharing the workload. Like around the house, there's only one thing that I say I won't do. And that's washing dishes. But I vacuum, I clean, I um, you know, I take out the I do everything. I don't, I don't, I don't wash dishes or I don't cook because I don't know how to cook. But everything else I do. I don't have a problem. I get up every morning and I fix my girls um lunch for school. I take them to school. Why? Because I I enjoy doing that. I remember days uh, when I had to work. I used to say, God, man, I wish I could be at home taking my girls to school. I wish I could be there in the morning getting them up, getting them ready. That's something that I want to do. Now that I'm able to do it, there's not one day that I have complained about having to get up or taking them because I enjoy doing it. So the workload in the household, it has to be shared. And that's why I always say routine maintenance in a marriage is vital. That's just like when a check engine light come on in your car, any responsible person, they're going to take that car to the nearest mechanic to get the routine maintenance done. So the same thing when it comes to your marriage, you have to do the routine maintenance. If you hear your spouse making a noise that you're not familiar with, you can't neglect that noise noise because once it may have been something small but when you didn't address the issue now it's a, a big issue because you didn't address it at the beginning when you first heard that noise exactly i think you have to be very careful when how you prioritize money right just because you make the money in the household that doesn't mean i'm supposed to be neglected exactly uh because here's the thing like if somebody was to offer me $100 million to divorce you, that's a no-brainer, it's a no. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. Because money is the least in my eyes. Right. Because I look at the things that I have with you that money can't buy. Correct. Money can't buy partnership. Not a true... Money can't buy loyalty. Mm -hmm. Money can't buy friendship. Money can't buy the covering that you give me. Like, the things that I have with you, it's no material thing that you ever... From the diamonds, to none of that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the things that money cannot buy. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I value most about my marriage. So when you're saying to your wife, what you griping for now, 
I took care of this. I took care of that. You took care of the bills. And just because you took care of the bills doesn't mean you took care of your wife. Right. Because the bills, you live there too. <laughs> you know, so, so it have, the responsibility has to be shared so one person don't get burned out. And when you get married, it's a partnership. Right. But so many people are married, but they feel like they're living single because the other person doesn't carry the, the, the load or help carry the workload. Just because you go to work um, and work 40 hours a week or 60 hours a week, you don't get to come home and neglect your kids because it's going to come a time where your kids going to be grown and you're going to miss so much of their life because your excuse was I was working so hard to provide for the family. Yeah. Yes, you was working hard to provide for the family, but that give you a right to neglect your kids. Do that give you a right not to show up to the football games? Do that give you a right not to be there? So you got to make sure it's a balance in every thing that you do because 10 years going to go by, 15 years going to go by, and you're going to look up, your kids are grown, and you're going to say, well, where did the time go? But you was chasing the dollar. It, money is the least. In the kingdom of God, money is the least. Right. It's the least. So your time is more valuable than anything. You can't get back time that you wasted. So you got to make your time count. You got to use, you got to use money to buy time. One thing about it, being at home with your children is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Being able to be that foundation, to build that foundation and to, to set the example, right. that is something that so many parents wish they have. Mm -hmm. So if you have the opportunity to be a homemaker or if you have a wife that's a homemaker, you have to make sure that you understand what you're giving your children to. Right, right. You're giving your children access to a blessing that money cannot buy. A parent that is nurturing, hands home, hands on, and being there. With that being said, you have to understand that now you have to look at that as a value. Right now, this this person is not only taking care of me; she taking care of my household. She making sure it functions. Cause think about it, baby. When you was at work, did you think about what your kids gonna eat? Mm -mm. Did you think about who gonna pick them up from school? No. Nah. Did you think about who gonna break up the fights? Mm -mm. Did you think about if the clothes wash? That's that. Those are things that you didn't think about. Why? Because those it's a it's a system. Right. But guess what you did do, which is amazing. You listened years ago when I was saying I need help. Mm -hmm. Now, no matter how tired you are, after you take your shower, before you go sit down and relax, the first thing you do is look and see what did I miss. Mm -hmm. Then you also no notice one of the things that I had was learned behavior clutter. You noticing like, man, she she being she's cluttering this stuff, and now a lot of people don't know that's that's a sign of depression. That's a sign of disconnection. That's but guess what you did? You said, okay, let's do this together. Mm -hmm. Let's partner. No matter how tired you were, because really the homemaker is tired, the man that's working is tired. But at the end of the day, we can't get tired together to the point where we don't work on what we have together. That's the marriage. Right. You got to work on your marriage every single day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't ever want to be in a place where I once was. Right. Married, but I felt like I was single. Right. Now I'm married and I feel like I'm connected. Now I'm married and I feel like I'm appreciated. Now I'm married and I feel like I'm valued. That, and that's so important because no, don't nobody want to be married but still feel lonely. Don't yeah. nobody want to be married and still feel single. So it's communication. Everything has to be put on the table. Look, yeah. this is my part, and I'm going to do my part. But e but w w once my part is done, I'm willing to come help you with your part. I'm not going to be selfish and say just because my part is complete, I can't help you or I can't assist you with what your part. In a marriage, the part is being able to help each other, yeah. being able to be being committed to one another, being able to pick up when your wife need help, being able to pick up when your husband um, need help and just not allowing one person to carry the whole workload in the marriage. The word says the two become one. I'm Pastor D. And I'm Pastor Tate. Peace. Peace.
Love Under the Influence podcast. It, it's a podcast to show you what marriage looks like. It redefines marriage under the will of God. And we also have a platform called Love Under the Influence. It's a community where you can come in, you can look at videos pertaining marriage, spirituality, um, finances, parenting and business so those five pillars we cover topics that we experience and we show you what we did to overcome those topics we show you what we did to help grow our marriage to the next level the program is 97 dollars for the year or you could put a dollar down and pay 9.97 a month it's a small investment but it yields a large return Okay. Okay. Because the transition going into it was a little weird. Mm -hmm. So if we can just isolate just that. Like, okay. I'm tell you about this. You don't have to say that, but just talk about just the program. Okay. Hey guys, Love Under the Influence is a community where we share our trials and tribulations about how we overcame um, the obstacles and the hurdles and the storms that we went through in our marriage. It's five pillars where we cover finances, business, parenting marriage and spirituality so each one of those topics you can click a button and we're discussing things that we went through and we're extremely transparent in showing you our issue we don't try to hide anything we don't try to sugarcoat anything it's at your disposal most couples don't want to go and get marriage counseling in person because they are private so this is something that you can watch with your spouse in the privacy of your own home and we show you what we learned learned and being married for over 21 years. So if you would like to come a part of this community, it's $97 for the year, or you could put a dollar down and it's $9.97 a month. It's a small investment, but it yields a large return.